Welcome to Die Trying. Install something new. I'm Patrick Norton. <laughs> I'm Michael Hand. And we have before us today a raspberry pie. People love raspberry pies. We love raspberry pies. Yes. Essentially, it's a $25, $35, $40, $70 if you buy it with a bundle. It's a little tiny computer. It's kind of a cousin to an mm -hmm. Arduino. It's a controller, it's a computer, but we're gonna install some software on it, open a LAC, that is gonna turn it into a fully functional media player and not only will it stream your local video collection or musical collection to your home theater or your stereo or wherever you want it to go, we're gonna get Netflix and Amazon on it as well. How cool is that? Here's everything you're gonna need, people. A Raspberry Pi board. We prefer the Model B because there's more memory on it. More memory is generally a better thing. An HDMI cable to connect to your TV. Either an Ethernet cable to connect it to your router or a USB Wi-Fi dongle. Temporarily, just for setup, you need a keyboard. And we're gonna need a USB power supply. Essentially, a micro USB cable that you would use to charge a tablet or a phone. A two amp power supply is a very, very good idea. Technically, it'll run on one amp. And you'll need an SD card to install the Linux distribution that you need. Oh, yeah. So in this case, we're going to keep it simple and use a thing called Berry Boot, which is a very easy way to do multiple distributions so you can try them out. But we're going to use that to install OpenELEC, which is a kind of a XBMC distribution. Berry Boot will download and install everything for you. It's very easy. But if you want to get more in depth with Raspberry Pi stuff, our sponsor lynda.com actually has some Raspberry Pi courses. Uh, lynda.com slash DIY, please check them out. So you select open a LEC, you pull the power, plug the power back in, restart, and you get something that looks like this. After the bootloader, you'll get this, yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> after the boot, there's a couple minutes of black screens and letters and stuff, but there's one more thing we're gonna need to actually make this practical. A controller. Yeah. Well, you could use a USB keyboard, but that would be inconvenient, and we like technology, so what you can do is in XBMC, if you go into the settings, there's an option for remote control, so you go to system, settings, services, and then remote control. We already have it enabled, but you can select that, allow programs to use this to control XBMC. Once the remote control is set up, you can unplug your USB keyboard and fire up your app inside of your Android or iPhone or whatever else you're, whatever, I mean, I'm sure there's a Blackberry XBMC control app. I hope not. I don't, don't encourage them. <laughs> it's cold, man. <laughs> Actually, you can now, some of the newer Blackberries, you can run uh, Android apps on them in an emulator. It's really cool. So the XBMC official apps will work perfectly fine, but I really, really like an app called Yahtzee, Y-A-T-S-E for but, Android. Yeah, I was gonna say it's Android pretty much. Android only, only I think. Why did you like that over the XBMC native control? So the control parts work fine, but there's a bunch of add-ons, like you can browse through your media using thumbnails. Oh. It has Chromecast support, so you can stream from the Raspberry Pi to your Chromecast <laughs> if you want. Lots of cool things, but if you're just being controlled, the official app is fine. So you've got this, which I guess you can control the weather, right? So you can you can view the weather at this point something. is just about it. We should probably set the zip code for the weather. Or we're going to get busy again, which always makes me laugh. But you were going to tell us about adding media. So we can you need to add stuff. media at this point. Right. You can control it great. So adding media is really easy. So you can do things like if you have all of your media on a USB drive, you can just plug that in and then add that as a source. Right. That's probably the easiest way to do it. You probably already have a machine in your house that already has your entire video collection or audio collection. Like a free NAS. Ooh. <laughs> At the very least, a shared folder on your Mac PC. And we can actually mount that using XBMC. Excuse yeah. Me, using OpenElect. So it. it's very similar. You go into add videos, you browse. And then from there, you want to go all the way down to Windows Network SMB. Ding. And then from there, you'll see your work group and the PC that you want. And then you should hopefully see the folder that you shared. So in this case, I shared my downloads folder. So we'll go ahead and add that. All right, so our downloads folder is added. And then you can see all the different stuff that we have here. Cool. So uh, I've got a video file here that we can play. And hopefully <laughs> it'll work. Ignore all those other ones, because this is a personal computer. So. You don't want to know. Uh, just a couple of those things. You don't want to know. <laughs> Have you been burying bodies again? <laughs> Not quite as bad. Yay, media. It worked. Cool. So, as you can see, it's not like instantaneous sort of thing, but it's still working. You'll, you'll have to wait a little bit. So getting media to play in the Raspberry Pi from a USB thumb drive, a USB hard drive, or off of a machine or a free NAS box or, or a, a UPnP server on your, on your home server in your house is pretty easy. Pretty easy and pretty free. Yeah. 
But doing things like Netflix and Amazon Video, which we mentioned earlier, that you're gonna need some software that you need to pay for. Yeah, so it used to be that there was an API for Netflix that allowed developers like the XBMC crew to uh, create plugins or devices or software, whatever you want to call it. It was really, really easy to access Netflix's servers. Forget it, it's gone. Yeah. What there is, <laughs> however, is playon.tv. So for either an annual fee or a lifetime subscription, you basically, let's call it 20 bucks to 120 bucks, depending on whether you buy it on sale for a year, for lifetime, get the HD version, don't get the version, get play later. But in any case, play on TV, I think for 20 bucks, we got play on TV and we installed that on here. Yeah, and so the setup for that is you also add the files, mm -hmm. but in this case, you add it as a universal plug and play source. Right. So we have this setup here where we have Amazon and Netflix added. And so, we should point out the first time we added it, we got it to connect, but nothing would play because <laughs> we needed to actually purchase the MPEG-2 codec which for is Raspberry Pi. another two dollars or so, right. whatever British pounds convert to. So you purchase the codec on the RaspberryPi.org website. You configure it in the in the text file. Basically, you turn a key on that unlocks it. And then once you have that running, you have your Play On server running. Then it just works how you would expect media to be. So. Here's all of a bunch of Adventure Time episodes. Is this your Adventure? So obviously not a Netflix interface right now. And you're gonna need a Netflix subscription or whatever right. the premium services that you do. But I'd say it starts faster than the Windows Share Media. Oh, the irony. And then you got some stuff. Some definite compression going on, mm -hmm. but it's better than no Netflix, I'd say. Right, because essentially playon.tv is grabbing your legit Netflix account, recompressing it, and streaming it over the interwebs. Mm -hmm. So for 30 bucks for an annual fee, I was a little disappointed with the interface I ended it up with on XBMC. Yeah, at that point, you might as well just get like a Chromecast yeah. and then get a better experience. But for free stuff, if you already have tons of media, mm -hmm and you have a Raspberry Pi, why not build a Raspberry Pi media server? And if we're doing Netflix wrong through playon.tv, comment down below on YouTube mm. or tweet at Dietrian. Or send us an email, dietrian at revision3.com. Yeah. And yeah. We'd love to hear about the uh, project <laughs> you'd like us to build. And of course, subscribe, dietrian.com or youtube.com slash dietrian. Goodbye. <laughs> that, was, that was a good one. Oh, man. Authority. Oh wait, and so this isn't working anymore. And yeah, we'll pick up it. Keyboards, and we'll do all that again. And then from there, everything is you know, gonna work perfectly. I don't know what just happened there, I apologize.